March, I was in Florida and then I got back and was home for a little bit. Then I went to Atlanta for work. I said this in another video, but I'm ready to not travel as much in April. I um, just don't want to. It's I love traveling and I do, um, but you know, it just, I like being home. I love my apartment. I love my friends and family in my city. So I miss my coworkers, you know, the whole thing. There's just nothing like being home, you know? Um, so not planning on traveling in April. Uh, I'll travel again in May. And, um, but yeah, it was so nice seeing my family. I already miss my niece and nephew. Well, my whole family, but you know, my niece and my nephew are my, are my babies. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, that was it. It was just kind of filled with traveling, so not a ton happened. So I'm glad this weekend is full of plans and friends and family and all that. Okay, so next, let's talk about pop culture. Some pop culture things are more going to be what I watched in March, like The Bachelor. Um, so I'll save that for then, but other things in pop culture, um, the biggest one right now is Beyonce's new album, Cowboy Carter, Cowboy Carter. Um, I'm obsessed with Beyonce. You probably know this. Um, she's just the best. And I love it. I love country music. Honestly, this album could have been a lot more country and I would have loved it because I do like country music, but she's you know, she's the best. My favorite song on the album is probably Two Most Wanted with Miley Cyrus. Um, but there's a lot of other good ones. Um, and I just love her. So, you know, it, um, yeah, let me know what you think. I know a lot of people have different opinions on the album, which is totally fair. So, um, okay, next one would be um, everything with P. Diddy. Um, I loved P. Diddy. I think he just, I loved him, you know, I'm a 90s baby, so I grew up with the hip-hop and rap, and I, it's, I'm not even gonna get into it, because there's so many, you know, essay trigger warnings, and, and I don't want to make you sad, or, you know, feeling dark, but it was, it was pretty heartbreaking to read everything, and I know that the truth, the full truth hasn't fully came out yet, so I'm not trying to be super quick to judge, but it's not looking good, and um, I just, I, my heart breaks for everyone affected, and all those victims, and just, it's just very disappointing, and I was really heartbroken to read everything about that, so that was pretty yeah, yeah, it was, it was sad, and it's just, it, I'm glad, though, that he, it is coming to light, I mean, I hope, you know, whatever the truth comes out, whatever it is, that he gets the consequences involved with that, okay, enough of the, of that, but the other pop culture thing, which is sad, too, is all the Kate Middleton things, um, I know a lot of people are saying that her video was AI, and I'm sure some of it was AI, but it's it's more sad that she has cancer and the world is just putting this micro, like, what's it called, magnifying glass on her and her family. I think it, she has the right to a private life, and especially concerning her health. Health is a very vulnerable personal thing to people, and I think we should just back off and this is coming from someone who's obsessed with the royal family. Obsessed. But, yeah, I just, um, yeah, it's just sad. And I hope nothing but the best for her and her family. Um, it's heartbreaking and, and cancer sucks. And, I mean, it beyond sucks. That's not even a, that's a light way of saying it. It is terrible and heavy. And, um, yeah, I wish her nothing but the best. And, Okay, so that brings us into what I've been watching. So, uh, still pop culture use. So, I have been watching the um, Quiet On Set. This is going to be the last dark piece of this video, podcast, whatever. So, Quiet On 
Rob Schneider, Nickelodeon. Um, I'm forgetting the other guy's name. Uh, Noah Peck, something Peck, the, the speech, the speech vocal, vocal coach. I, uh, again, I'm not gonna talk too much, Nick, because it's so dark and a lot of trigger warnings, but wow, that was, it, again, I'm a 90s baby, so I grew up with all those shows. Drake and Josh, The Amanda Show, like, it just, my heart is so heavy for all of them, Drake, but I mean, all of them that were affected, it is disgusting what they got away with, and, um, it, again, I hope terrible consequences come to them, I know that it hasn't, that hasn't been the case yet, but I'm hoping, you know, karma, karma's a bitch, like, it, you know, it, it'll come. I believe in karma. And if you're that disgusting of a human and you treat kids like that, off with their heads. <laughs> like, it, I don't even mean to laugh. Like, it is just wild what men in power get away with. And I know women in power too, but in this situation, it's men in power. They're getting away with crimes that are unforgivable I mean, and inexcusable and um, I hope all those victims get help and seek professional help and, and family and friends support and just I, you know it, yeah, my heart breaks and now I'm just you know how do I look at those shows with the positive fun vibe that I had when I was a kid I don't know you know it's 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 really really sad so I've been watching that. Um, okay, lighter fun topics. The Bachelor. I love the Bachelor series. I'm obsessed with the whole Bachelor Nation show. Golden Bachelor, Bachelorette, you know, Paradise, Island in Paradise, or what's the actual title? Island in Paradise or Paradise Island, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. I just say Paradise. Um... Although I did hear from a friend that they might be canceling Paradise. No, no, no. That's my favorite one. I only, like, watch The Bachelor and Bachelorette to know who will be going to Paradise. Not actually, but you know what I mean. Kind of. Um, so, spoiler alert, if you have not seen the last episode of The Bachelor, skip past a little bit. But it has been a couple weeks, so... I hope everyone's seen it. He did end up choosing Kelsey, which I kind of knew. People kind of knew. It just towards the last couple episodes, you could tell that he was more into Kelsey than Daisy. I never thought Rachel had a shot. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I loved Rachel, but I didn't see them having a connection. Um, so yeah, Kelsey's sweet. I think they're I think they're great together. I actually think it might work. Um, unlike a lot of those Bachelor Bachelorette people, I do see if them having a future. But who knows, right? Um, the next Bachelorette is Jen, which I liked her. I thought she was fun and cute, but I don't really know her that well. I think she's very young. I would have liked to see Maria or Rachel, um, but, you know, it is what it is, they have their ways and who they choose, so, I heard rumors that Maria was offered the Bachelorette, but she, like, refused it, I don't know if that's true, but I also would have liked to see her as the Bachelorette, um, I'm sure Jen will be fine, but I just wasn't super excited it was her, I would have liked Rachel or Maria, um, so, yeah. Okay, I also have been watching, I went to, um, or, sorry, I also have been watching, um, The Gentleman. The Gentleman is the show with, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Theo, Theo James. That tall drink of water he is, oh my gosh. The Gentleman is on Netflix. It's a good show. Do I think it's the best? No, but it's entertaining and funny and fast-paced. Um, his brother, Freddie, I don't know the actor. 
it's a fun show to watch. Um, yeah. Okay, I watched Expats on Amazon Prime that has um, Nicole Kidman in it and, and other people, but she's probably the biggest name that I could think of, yeah. And it's good. It's, um, again, not the best show I've ever seen, but it was good. It, it's about expats, like people that moved who are American to another new country and I was an expat and at one point I lived in Spain for almost three years so excuse me so <clears throat> I kind of relate to that notion of like do I go home do I not go home working you know having relationships having friends in a new in a different country it, it is interesting granted Spain and Hong Kong are very different I have never been to Hong Kong I you know I can't relate on that level at all nor with the level of money and wealth they have. Okay, no, that they were very wealthy. But anyway, it follows these kind of like three to four couples or people and their journey of living in Hong Kong. And it's good. It's It was good. It was a really, it got me interested. Uh, so, yeah, that was good. I'm watching currently Palm Royale on Amazon, or not Amazon, Apple TV. I'm only a few episodes in. It's, I might end up, I might stop watching it. Um, Kristen Wiig is in it and she's funny, but it's good, but it's not really captivating me. Like I'm not like super excited to watch the next episode. So I don't know. I don't think I'll end up finishing it, but I tried to watch the Buccaneers on Apple TV. It's like another timely piece. Um, and I, sorry, I'm like looking at my mirror here because I always, when I film with the, with the phone, like the camera on the other side of the phone, I can't see myself. And anyway, you don't care. But the Buccaneers is like a period piece similar to Bridgerton, similar to the Golden Age, which I love those shows. Buccaneers, not it. It's cringe. It's try hard. Terrible acting. Terrible storyline very unrealistic. Hated the Buccaneers. Couldn't watch it. Couldn't watch it. I'm someone that needs good acting. I'm a big movie buff person. No. <laughs> Skip the Buccaneers. Speaking of movies and that, I did go to the movie theater a couple times. Um, I love going to the movies. And saw the new Kristen Stewart movie, Love Lies Bleeding. I mean, three out of ten. <laughs> it was terrible. Um, I might, I might just not be artsy and hipstery enough to appreciate it. I, I understand that. I think there is an artsy cinematic element to it that I just didn't get. But it was just terrible acting, terrible storyline. <laughs> I need good acting in movies and shows to really like it. Um, and it just was terrible acting. I thought it was Bella Swan the entire time. I was like, oh, look at Bella. Like, you know, where's Edward? And making all those terrible jokes. So, <laughs> yeah, I didn't like Love Lies Bleeding. It, w it had good potential. But then I saw Dune 2. I'm not going to say spoilers because I know a lot of people are still going to the theaters to watch it, so no spoilers. Now, Dune, I have a I have a journey with because when it, the first one came out in 2021, I refused to see it because I was just being stubborn and I was like, oh, Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya, like, I don't see it. I don't think he'd be good in a sci-fi movie. Yeah, so I just kind of refused. And then the second one came out and everyone loved it. And I was like, okay, I love sci-fi movies. I love action. I love movies that are up for a lot of Academy Awards, which Dune won. The first Dune in 2021 was up for a lot. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Everyone talked about it. My brothers liked it, you know? So I was like, I'll give it a shot. Saw Dune won. Loved it. Was it the best movie ever? No, but it was really good. And Timothy Chalamet was great. Okay. Sorry, I just, I got a phone call and so my camera shut off. I don't know where I was. I think I was talking about Dune 1. No, Dune 2. So yeah, I saw Dune 1 and then went to the theaters to see Dune 2 and I was floored. It was so good. I, um, I loved it. Again, no spoilers because it's still out in theaters, but it was. 
was so good and Timothy Chalamet was great. So, yeah. Um, okay. Next, let's just do the favorites that I have. So, this is the creamer that I've been using. It is the dairy-free oat creamer, the maple brown sugar one. just do it. 